What? Dude, oh, hey Jim. Dude, are you drunk already? No, you're drunk. Holly, oh my god. Wait, you're supposed to get drunk as we're doing this. This is America, and I'm gonna tell you an American story. Come on in. Ugh. So, uh, what you, what you drinking there? Rum and Coke. Yeah, uh, I mean, looks, looks more like, more like rum rather than Coke there. Do we want to do this or not? Uh-huh. So, uh, what are we learning about today? We are learning about Julia and Abby Smith. Oh, okay, Smith, wait, wait, Smith? I thought you said, I thought you said this was the Hollisters. Look! Uh, I don't, I don't get what, I don't get what's going on. What, what is this? Uh, their dad was Zephaniah Hollister Smith, and his dad was Zephaniah Hollister, so, you know. Wait, Zep Zephaniah? What, what is Zephaniah? Look, can we move on this? They have Star Trek names, it's the 1800s, let's just continue. How many Star Trek names am I gonna have to hear for this? I thought we were talking about Smith, now all of a sudden we're on Zephaniah. I don't know what, what is going on here? Jimmy. What are you making me do? This is ridiculous, what, what is this? We're gonna learn, and it's gonna be magical, and it's gonna be wonderful. You're gonna shut up and sit there. <coughs> the Smiths were born in Glastonbury, the ancestral home of the Hollister family. So they were living in like the 1800s and stuff. Their daily lives, they're learning things like doing good works and learning to read and study, tending the farm, weaving in a spinning, drinking tea with the friends, nursing the sick, and, and helping out the poor a little bit, because, you know, you, you poors ain't too bad. And Abby and Julia kind of realize, girl, the slavery thing sucks. So what they start to do, they start to distribute all these anti-slavery petitions. So they're handing out these petitions and people are not big fans about this. And Julia's like, you know what we should do? We should get William Lloyd Garrison to come here. And Abby's like, you know, that's rad girl. So William Lloyd Garrison shows up at the Kimberly Mansion, their house. And so he gets up on their tree stump and they, they get a big crowd there. He was banned from speaking in Hartford. Uh, so he gets up there and he's all like, slavery is bad mic drop. Did they have mics back then? Yeah. Julia, in her spare time, is kind of like, you know, this whole inequality between men and women is kind of a bummer. I'm going to deal with this and I'm going to prove it by writing my own translation of the Bible. Hashtag feminism. Julia was really good at languages. She knew Latin, French, Greek, Hebrew, Latin. And so she sits down and gets to cranking this thing out all through like the 18, early 1850s, 1855, she finishes it and is like, pen drop. So by like 1873, Old slavery things kind of like taken care of, and it's like abolitionist high five. Suck on that slavery, yeah. And after that, they're just like we're gonna lay low and just kind of be like cheerleaders for women's suffrage. But then this chump tax collector shows up to their house, and he's like. I have reassessed your property and now it's been reappraised and you got to you got to pay me some money cuz that's how government works. Uh and then Julia and Abby like dude this is this is not cool. We can't even vote and we gotta pay taxes. This is like, this is some Boston 
straight up Boston tea party stuff going on here. And we're throwing down the gauntlet, little tax man. It is on. So Julia's like, Abby, you're a real good public speaker. And you should go, we should go to the town meeting and you should give a speech. And so Abby's up in front of town meeting and she's all like, all we ask of the town is not to rule over them as they rule over us. Uh, are you, you, you okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Right. Is not to rule over them as they overrule us, rule over us, but to be on an equality with them. And everybody's like totally silent, like holy cow, she has two X chromosomes and she wants to be equal with the people who've got Y chromosomes, which is weird, but this is kind of like taxation without representation. And the, the whole town is in a conundrum and uh, they, like, there's newspapers published around the country, and people are like, dang, these, these Smith sisters, they, this is what's, this is what's going on. These, the tax guys show up, and they're like, you know what, if you're not gonna pay your taxes, we're gonna take your cows. So they, they take the Smith sisters' cows. The cows' names are... Jesse, Daisy, Proxy, Minnie, Bessie, Whitey. Do we really need to know all of the cows' names? May I continue? Okay. And Lily. <laughs> Lily was the last cow. I had one cow left and you could have just waited. The cows are like so emotionally dependent. These are really weak spirited animals. Um, but like they won't even be milked unless Julia comes and like stands by them while they're being milked. So like they, they try to auction off these cows. And the, the Smiths are like angry. They're like, dude, just don't take our cows. And he's like, I'm gonna take your cows and there's nothing you can do about it. So like the whole town shows up and they're like, we're gonna, we're gonna buy your cows, girls. And Abby and Smith are kind of like angry and they're like, no, nope, we're gonna buy our own cows. So they buy four of their cows. Uh, these newspapers are like running all these articles about them and they're like they are heroes because they're like Sam Adams but just with girl parts and so like it's kind of like a George Bailey kind of deal and they're getting all these letters of support and they're getting money from people and money was useful because they could buy things. So afterwards, Abby goes to a bunch of women's suffrage meetings and she goes to work, work, uh, war, Worcester, Massachusetts and she gives like these speeches and they, they get the Smith sisters get a lawyer and they go to court and they they're arguing the cases and the lawyers are up there in front of the judge and they're making passionate speeches and people are like this is this is this is pretty great. And they didn't have TV, so if they couldn't watch television or Netflix, 
court cases were kind of like like Netflix. Okay. So the judge is like, dude, I I kind of see this for the Smith sisters. I feel like this is this is wrong. So we're going to we're going to rule in their favor and the Smith sisters the Smith sisters they get to they win at law. Julia kind of decides like my sister's pretty awesome um, and I'm gonna publish this big book about her called Abby Smith and her cows. They, they make this book and then they go around and they meet at like all these women's conventions and they they go to Washington and they go before the United States Senate and they're like, listen up, chumps. Women should be equal to men. Hashtag feminism. And these senators are like, whoa. After all this, Abby dies. Abby's dead. Um, and Julia's like, I should find someone to like hang out with. And there's this judge, Amos A. Parker. And he's like, whoa, this lady wrote a Bible and stuff. I should marry her. Uh, so she marries him at the age of 87. Whoa. 87 years old. Yes, they were old. Who pays for that wedding? Where do they even go for their honeymoon? <laughs> I assume they honeymooned at Shady Acres Retirement Home? I'm just imagining their wedding night. Just dusty and wrinkly and... Honeymoon sweet smelled of formaldehyde and mothballs. Julia died a few years later and... That was it for the Smith family. None of them had kids or anything, but uh, uh, they were like these amazing, powerful, charismatic, suffragette and abolitionists. And they made such like a huge impact on the country. And to honor them, uh, there is now a middle school named after them. Hashtag feminism. <laughs> if you're like a dude hero, you get a statue and your face carved into a mountain. But if you have lady parts, you get middle school.